Aging is inevitable and with it comes health and quality of life challenges. Caring for senior dogs takes a bit of planning to help them to age gracefully and in this video I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to help your old dog age gracefully and stay happy. <laughs> Welcome to the Dr. Alex Answers Show, where I answer all your dog and cat health related questions. If we're just meeting for the first time, then I'm Dr. Alex, the veterinarian behind rpetshealth.com. And in today's show, I'm going to answer a question sent in by Renee. And Renee runs the amazing Tripods community, where she helps pets who have needed an amputation for whatever reason. And she provides some great information and support to their owners. And I'll leave a link down below. So Renee replied to my newsletter and said that one of her biggest challenges with her pet is figuring out how to help him age pain-free with grace and dignity while keeping him engaged and happy. And this is a great question and something we should strive towards with all our aging pets, with the overriding goal being to maximise their quality of life. So I think we can break this question down into three main parts. How to help a senior pet age with dignity, how to keep them pain free, and how to maintain engagement and mental agility. So starting with aging with dignity, the first thing is to, to recognize that your pet is a healthy weight or try and get your pet to be a healthy weight. So we should never underestimate the importance of weight gain, being overweight and obesity in the overall health of our body. So fat is pro-inflammatory, that has a detrimental effect to the general body health and the general body condition. Fat also plays a role increasing the risk of arthritis and we'll come on to pain later, but arthritis, diabetes as well, and numerous other conditions. So trying to maintain a healthy weight will certainly help maintain quality of life and it will help reduce the risk of other problems that, that develop and often develop in older age. So tied in with this is also recognizing that dietary changes are different for a senior dog compared to a young dog. So they need different protein levels, they need different energy levels, and this means that switching and feeding a senior diet can make a big difference with things like the prevention of obesity, but also the maintenance of muscle mass as well. There are also other supplements or other additions that can be made or that are already included in a good quality senior diet that can help them remain pain-free, so things like essential fatty acids can be really beneficial for this. We shouldn't overstate that, but feeding a diet specific to the stage of life that your dog is in can really play a role in helping them age well and again reducing the risk of disease and optimising health. Oral health is another issue, so it's much like obesity, the, the disease within the mouth also affects the rest of the body. So if a dog has got heavy tartar, if they've got a lot of gingivitis, then that sets up a really pro-inflammatory situation. So you get a lot of inflammatory um, proteins and inflammatory markers and even bacteria circulating in the blood. And that has a knock-on effect on, on health. So a really unhealthy rotten mouth is going to result in a really unhealthy body. So maintaining good good dental hygiene that could be by brushing it could be by chews it could be by specific diet um, but also taking the advice of your vet and getting the any dental disease sorted so having a scale and polish or even getting any extractions that need to be done really done at an early stage while the disease is not so severe rather than waiting till the disease is really bad it's having really detrimental consequences maybe your dog stopped eating because their mouth is so sore now imagine how sore their mouth must be to to make them stop eating but also your dog will be that much older so there is another chance of of other conditions being being present as well and complicating the picture and making the risks of having an anaesthetic and a dental procedure a lot higher. So maintaining good oral hygiene is also very important. So another way we can help our pets age with dignity is actually making sure that we don't avoid any concerns or ignore any concerns that we might have. So remain vigilant. But if you think that your dog has started to drink more, if their weight has started to fall off, if they're started to become a little bit stiff, then take action at an early stage. So it can be very challenging sometimes to notice that our dogs are unwell or they're not quite right. And the signs, the differences can be quite subtle. So I'll often say to people who come in with a concern, and if I can't find anything on an exam, the likelihood is, is that there is something going on. We're just not able to fully pick it up at this stage with a simple examination. And that might be where a blood test comes in um, or further, further uh, monitoring at home. So recording the amount that they're drinking with 
most conditions of old age, be that arthritis, kidney disease, diabetes, um, skin disease, whatever, if we get onto the problem, we, we diagnose it and we treat it at an early stage, then the results on your dog's quality of life will be much less. The treatment will likely be easier or quicker to work. Um, and the prognosis, the long-term prognosis, is also likely to be better. So definitely don't uh, ignore any concerns and remain vigilant for changes that any changes that you might see in your dog. Similarly, don't ignore any pre-existing conditions. So if you already know that your dog, for example, has had um, a cruciate ligament rupture and has had surgery for that, or if they've been treated conservatively, then that's not going away. They're going to have arthritis in their in their joint, in their knee, and so addressing that rather than just forgetting about it or rather than just saying well I'm giving some joint supplements or I'm doing something I've changed their bedding and, and, and ignoring any change in that condition so just really staying on top of all of the health conditions that your dog might already be suffering from and also being vigilant for any changes in their behavior or changes in, in, in how they're carrying themselves to get onto problems sooner rather than later. And so my last way to, to help a, an older dog in general age more gracefully is just to keep up with regular, um, regular appointments and health checks at your vet. So if we think, you know, there's a saying that, that one dog year is worth seven human years, well, you know, we should be definitely having our older dogs examined on a regular basis. Now, many people will say every six months, certainly every year should be a minimum because a lot can change in that effectively three and a half or seven years of your dog's life. And again, if we can, if we can run monitoring blood tests or if we can run just general health checks, it means, or, or you know, even just feeling, their, feeling your dog's tummy or manipulating their joints to look for signs of pain or a reduced range of motion that might indicate arthritis. Again, if we can get onto these conditions earlier rather than later, then that's gonna set us up to be able to treat and manage any condition that does come up much faster and much more successfully. Okay, so the next part of the question, I guess, was really how do we ensure that they remain pain-free? And if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that how important that I think that is. I don't think there's any reason why any dog should suffer from unrecognized or untreated pain. So the first step in ensuring that our older dogs are pain-free is knowing what the signs of pain are and I've got a separate video that I'll link up here that goes through all of those different signs so if we're just aware of what to look out for we can pick it up at a much earlier stage and again like I've already said that puts us in a much better position to treat it more effectively so if we think our dog is in pain for whatever reason then getting them checked out getting that diet the reason diagnosed is important but also addressing it early so Pain is something that if it's untreated, then what happens is we get something called a, a wind-up effect. And what that means is that the nerves coming from that painful area, they just get so used to feeling pain that any slight stimulation just becomes accentuated. So that might be a gentle touch suddenly becomes painful. So we really, it's really important to avoid that being the case. So addressing any pain early and not accepting um, a, a difficulty getting up or a little bit of stiffness as just a normal aging process. It's not, it's a sign of pain and it should be addressed accordingly. Now, there are a number of different ways we can go about addressing and minimizing or even eliminating pain in our older dogs. So medications obviously play a role um, and they really are the cornerstone of any arthritis treatment plan or pain for other, other reason. We can also make a lot of changes at home and they're good changes to make for any senior dog. So if you've got a lot of laminate slippery flooring, then using carpets or rugs um, to just increase the grip so that your dog is, finds it easier to get up, they're not slipping over, they're not falling over when they're turning corners. It might be if they've got a little bit of neck pain or back pain, actually raising up their food bowl off the ground will just help them get down to their meal times or their water bowl with a much greater ease. You could use some ramps to get up any stairs that you have in the house or to get into the house. Um, you can also get ramps that will help your dog get up into the car. Um, you could always lift them on, but obviously for your own point of view, if you've got a larger dog, then actually having a ramp is much safer for, for them and for you. You're not gonna drop them and you're also not gonna put your back out um, trying to, to get them up into the car either. And then the last thing would just be to maintain exercise. So we want exercise to always be regular. 
the worst thing we can do is to have a dog being a couch potato for the week and then at the weekend they go on a ridiculously long hike or a run. You know, yeah, that's just asking for, for pulled muscles, for swollen joints and for pain the next day. So we want any exercise to be, to be regular, ideally daily, a couple of times a day. And we want it to be at a level that they enjoy, that they get a, a reasonable amount of exercise or they get a good sniff around, but it's not more than they can cope with. So if you're finding that when your dog gets back after they've had a bit of a sleep or a bit of a rest, they're really stiff getting up or they're stiff the next day, then the likelihood is just that you're doing too much exercise with them. Now that might mean that you have to um, you know, put the ball away that, that they like to chase or they've always liked to chase, but you know, really we want to be doing regular, kind of low impact exercise if possible, especially if there is a problem with joints. Um, and just yeah, using your dog's behavior and their recovery as a guide for how much exercise is right for them. So the last part of Renee's question was how to maintain engagement and mental agility. And you know, mental stimulation is so important for our senior dogs. So we can buy new toys, we can get problem solving toys. So that can be as something as simple as um, a muffin tray. You put treats in a few of the different um, uh, different trays, different muffin sections. You cover the, them all with tennis balls and your dog has to, to pick, um, pick them up to get the treats underneath. Um, so interactive toys are great. Um, just changing the toys regularly, maybe teaching them new tricks. You absolutely can teach old dogs new tricks. You know, you might want to keep them simple. It might take a little bit longer, but it really does give their brains a good workout and that's very important. Um, and just encouraging interaction. So including them in the family, being patient with them when it's taking them a little bit longer to come to you or it's taking them a little bit longer to get up. So being patient, but encouraging that interaction. And these are things that are all really important and um, at preventing something called canine cognitive dysfunction. Um, we might think of it as, it as senility or just a reduction in mental kind of agility and awareness. And it's something that I've actually got a video planned um, in a couple of weeks. But canine cognitive dysfunction is something that's really important. It's actually really common and I think it's much more common than we might think it is. And if we can take a few of these steps in the early stages, it can actually really help slow down that degeneration in brain function that some senior dogs or a lot of senior dogs will will develop as they get older. So we also need to adapt to their changing needs um, and you know eyesight might be going so we should try and keep furniture layouts similar so we shouldn't go changing around the layout because they're more likely to bump into things they might have a reduction in their healing in their hearing so if we're calling them they might be quite slow to respond so we just need to be patient with them and accept that that's something that might be the be be the case and might be going on and might be affecting their quality of life so other things would to consider might be that they're um, becoming a little bit lean or their hair coats getting thin putting a jacket on them when you go out if it's cold outside. They might never have needed one before, but putting a jacket on your senior dog in the rain might be great. They might also find grooming themselves a little bit more challenging. So you might need to be cutting their nails. That's something that's very, very common is that our older dogs will develop overgrown nails, but just taking steps to prevent that being the case can make a big difference, especially, you know, if you think of an older dog with arthritis in its toes, if their nails are growing too long, then that actually can push the toes up, it can push them out, and that can be painful. So it can mean that every time your dog takes a step, then they're in a lot more pain than they need to be and simply cutting their nails can make a little bit, you know, can make a little bit of a difference and can make a significant difference. And really with all of these things, quality of life has to be our overriding goal. So we want to try and assess their quality of life. We want to always have in the back of their mind, are they happy? What are they struggling with? And is there anything that I can do to help them cope with the challenges of aging in a much better and more dignified way? Because there is so much that we can do, but the vast majority, majority of it comes about through just being aware that there might be problems, trying to recognize those problems early and actually taking steps to address them and to put plans in place to make life easier for your senior dog. So I hope that gives you a few action steps to consider Renee and addresses any particular concerns that you might have had. If you have a question like Renee that you'd like me to answer, then you can leave a comment here. You can tweet me at our Pets Health, or if you reply to my newsletter, then your questions will get priority. And I'll leave a newsletter sign up link down below in the description. Just make sure that however you get in touch, you include the hashtag Dr. Alex Answers, and I'll know to um, include your question in um, my planning. So until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from ourpetshealth.com, and this is the show where you ask the questions and Dr. Alex answers.